Hello everybody! Today I am doing a video on my reading workshop model. So I've had this requested quite a few times and by the way I am so glad that I am back doing my normal videos. I have completely missed doing this. Um, so I'm back. Hopefully I'm going to keep that one day a week scheduled like I did before. Um, but yes, yeah, so you will be seeing more regular videos on tips and ideas that you can get from me. So <laughs> I am doing a video on my reading workshop model. Um, it's taken me quite a little bit to really make sure that I had all of the different components that I wanted to incorporate into my reading workshop. And when I say reading workshop, I actually mean readers and writers workshop. Um, so for many of you who do not know me, I am a fourth grade teacher in Pennsylvania and I teach ELA specifically. I taught kindergarten for four years, so I'm really, really um, comfortable with kindergarten and reading and writing. When it came to me figuring out what I wanted to do in fourth grade, I really had to sit down and kind of take little bits and pieces from kindergarten, from everything else, all the other resources that I was getting it from, from teachers that had been working there for quite some times, from um, bloggers from people that I really respected in the reading community and I finally came up with this model so I'm gonna give you guys a little walkthrough of what it's like in my readers and my writers workshop I have a two-hour block so I have two hours for readers and writers workshop and I get two different classes a day so what we have done and by we I mean my partner teacher who teaches the math science and social studies aspect of it. What we've done is we've taken our kids and we've kind of stuck them in a bowl and we shook them all up and we said, okay, let's have this group and let's have a different group. So we've kind of separated our group um, based on their needs and what exactly I needed to focus on for those two hours and same for her at the same time. So I have eight different components that I really wanted to make sure that I got into my two hour block. Those eight components are word study, my writing mini lesson, my independent writing time, my reading small group time, my independent reading time, individual conferences for writing, individual conferences for reading, and my reading response journals. Those are the eight things that I really wanted to make sure that I was able to fit within this two hour block of time that I got with each group. So here's how my day plans out. And this is kind of the different things that I incorporate into each of those different components for my, for my two hour block. When students come into my classroom in the mornings or in the afternoons, they immediately get started in their word study. I have worked with quite a few teachers within my grade level, and we've set up this really easy, user-friendly, and it's very customized way for our learners to be able to get what they need. So not every child is on the same word study. I have kids who are on within words. So if you don't know about words their way, there are different books. I have kids who are on within words. And then I have students who are on um, syllables. And I have students who are on prefixes and suffix suffixes. So everyone is kind of doing what it is that they need during that specific amount of time. So I give them about 10 to 15 minutes to be able to work on their word study. Once they've done the video, they've taken notes and they've kind of completed the sort, they have various activities within a packet that they can go through and complete. If you want to get kind of a better idea of what it is that they do during my, um, my word study time, I am planning on doing a video just to kind of give you guys an example of how to teach word studies and then what are some of the activities that you could be doing with word studies as well. So be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you would like to hear more about word studies and how I incorporate that into my classroom. So they get about 10 to 15 minutes with their word study. Once that is done, I ring my bell and they automatically go to our meeting area. This is where I do my mini lesson for my writing. So I'm specifically teaching a very specific skill that I want my learners to be able to go back and to do. And once they go back, then they have kind of their independent time. My mini lesson will last anywhere from about 10, 15 minutes. I don't want to go any more than that because it's supposed to be very focused, very explicit, and super quick. I don't want to spend a lot of time of me sitting up there and talking. I want to give them lots of opportunity to be able to go back and practice the skill that they're supposed to be practicing. Something else to note, because I know a lot of people wonder, how do you incorporate that grammar? 
I kind of do a little bit of both. So one day I might focus a little more heavily on the grammar, whereas another day I'm focusing on maybe adding some of those details and those different types of writing that you can incorporate. So it kind of varies. It depends on what it is that we are writing about right now. Um, right now we're working on personal narratives. So I have lots of little different lessons that I kind of incorporate into that. And then I have them go back out and practice. So when they're out in their independent writing time, they're focusing on that one skill that they're supposed to be working on. When they're finished with that, that's when they get the opportunity to be able to write something else. I give them the option to be able to kind of write what it is, what they wanna write, and then I also give them that opportunity to have kind of your um, responses. So I have like a little list and sheets that, can, that they can go through and pull off a little sticker and they can put it into their journal and they can complete the response that there is so that they're constantly working on that writing. I never want them to have kind of that downtime because I feel like once they have that downtime, um, that's when all the chaos happens. I really wanna make sure that I'm giving them something to do consistently. And they are always understanding of what it is that they have to do when they're finished. So they know that when they finish that specific skill that they're working on, then they can go through and complete the reader response journals that, that, that I have available for them. So once I ring my bell, I, I group them back together. And this is kind of my share time. This is where I have them come back and share out what it is that they kind of got from the lesson overall. How did they incorporate it into their writing that day? What were some things that they noticed? And this was kind of our author's chair moment. So that usually takes up about five minutes or so. It's not very long, it's super quick. And then we start to tell them, okay, now we're gonna move on to our reading time, which makes it a really nice transition into small groups. Because I can easily say, okay, I'm gonna start with this small group, and then I have that small group start. Once they've had their time with their independent writing, and that typically lasts about 20 to 25 minutes, then we start to transition into our reading time. Um, now, reading is going to be very, very different for me um, compared to some of the other schools that I've kind of noticed. A lot of schools will have kind of a whole group lesson, and this is very typical of what I did in kindergarten too. I had a whole group lesson, and then we went out and we, you know, kind of had our, our choices that we would normally have. For the upper grade, I don't have a lot of time with them, so I wanted to make it very meaningful. Since I'm really trying to focus on what everyone specifically needs, I felt like small group would be the best option for me. Um, it allows me to meet with students a little more regularly, and then I can really make sure that I'm focusing on the skills that each one, each individual child needs. So I will be pulling small groups while everyone else is completing different tasks. Um, a lot of the, what I want them to do is just be able to read. I really want to make sure my students have the, you know, have enough time to just be able to sit down and just read. I feel like too, um, with our lives, just in general, we are so busy, constantly busy. We are running out to this practice and then we're going to this practice and it's just so much happening that I don't, I don't think kids have the opportunity to just be able to grab a good book and just sit back and relax and read. And that's what I wanna give them the opportunity to do in my classroom. So they have independent reading time unless they're meeting with me during small groups. Now, I do have a couple of things that I like for them to do while they're out during their independent reading time. So what I have come up with this year is I have a reader's response journal. And this is an idea that I got from um, The Book Whisperer, from that book, which is a phenomenal read if you have not read it already. So after reading that book, I really wanted to incorporate the reader response journals. I wanted them to be able to write me letters and kind of show that love of reading and really um, really have them just kind of share out what it is that they're thinking. I feel like this is also really great for them to be able to make those connections, make those predictions, ask those questions. You know, just things that you don't really get an opportunity to be able to listen to every kid do. So I have created a, since we're on a six day cycle, I've created a schedule for them. And I told them, okay, so on a specific cycle day, you are gonna be responsible for turning in your reader response journal. And on this day, I need to have a letter. And we kind of sat down, we brainstormed a bunch of questions that we can ask, things that we can put into our letters. 
what the letter should look like, what kind of format, how do we go back and reread it and recheck it. And we've already done all of this so that when they're in their independent time, they know that, okay, I can be writing down all this stuff. Now, um, we did have to do a lot of kind of prepping for this first, just to kind of give you guys some ideas. Like I really wanted to make sure that they understood that the purpose of these letters is to share your thinking, is to be able to tell me what it is that you're thinking about the book that you're reading independently. So what I had them do was I had them practice reading is thinking first. And if you know anything about reading is thinking, basically you're taking a bunch of sticky notes and you're just putting down your thoughts. On the sticky note and then you're saying okay in this part of the book I'm gonna put my sticky note down in this part of the book this is what I was thinking or this is a question that I have or this is a connection that I'm making um, or a prediction that I'm doing or I'm wondering you know different things and so after we had the opportunity to be able to fill our book up with some sticky notes then I told them to take those sticky notes out and then use those sticky notes to be able to come up with their writing because that's what those those that reading is thinking those sticky notes are there for so that you can go back and kind of rethink of what are some of the things that you were you were wondering or wondering or thinking about while you were reading your book so that was a really easy and it kind of made it so much easier for them to be able to process when it came down to sitting down and writing their letters. So they turned their reader's response journals into me on the certain cycle day. Then I will read it, write a response back to them so that they can, we can kind of have like a back to forth conversation of what is happening during their independent reading time. I feel like it also holds them accountable as well so that I can see what it is that they're actually reading and doing during their independent time. So that was something that was also really, really important for me. Something else that I also did was during my small group lessons, and I kind of talked about this in one of my vlogs too, but during my small group lessons, I also like to have some type of response in there as well. Now this response is very different from the response that I'm getting from their independent reading. In my small group reading response, I am looking at the specific skill that I'm teaching them. So I'm giving them a specific skill. They have some type of an article, a, a small book, something that we've been doing together as a small group for them to go back and be able to show me kind of their end learning, the end result of what it is that they've learned so far. So that is kind of the overall idea of my response journals and how I'm going to be using them. So during my small group time, this is a time for me to really focus in on a skill that students need. I want to make sure that I'm giving them something that they are needing, that they're not wasting their time with, and something that I'm kind of doing my mini lesson. So imagine if you will, like instead of doing my whole group mini lesson, I'm just doing several different mini lessons based upon what I feel like my students need. So I may have one group that's on summarizing. I may have another group that's already moving into character traits and kind of comparing characters, but that's exactly what they need. I may have some groups who are well past summarizing fiction and they don't really need that, but they could just use a really good refresher. So instead of me wasting time and doing it as a whole group lesson, I'm doing lots of different small groups and being able to really focus in on some of those skills. So this is where I'm not gonna do a lot of chapter books, to be honest, during my small group time, because I really want them to kind of really dig deep into their independent read versus me giving them tons of chapter books and it's just kind of crazy. I feel like we will get to that point where we may have some type of a book study, but that's not where I wanna start right now. Right now, I wanna look into articles and being able to say, okay, well, let's pull this article, let's pull this small book, let's pull a picture book even. Maybe it's a picture book that we were talking about in writing. And then I can incorporate that into my, my reading small group time, which making those connections really, really helps um, students too in the long run. So that's what I'm doing during my small group time is focusing in on specific skills. I also want to say that during my small group time is another chance for me. I can quickly say, hey guys, when you go back to the small group table, I want you to take up your word study and I want you to sort your words for me. That way, because I know that I have them doing a lot of independent stuff with their word study, but I can go back to the table and really, really quick, just kind of check to see if they're understanding their word study. And if not, I can make a note of it and then pull that student for an individual conference later on so that I can really make sure that they're understanding it. I really hope that this is all making sense to everyone. 
Like, I feel like you're really gonna say, oh my gosh, this looks like a ton of stuff happening. Ooh. I hope this is making total sense to you. So during that small group time, again, you know, I'm focusing in on the specific skills. Now, here's where I'm gonna start pulling into my data binders. I will do those a lot during individual conferences, mainly my writing conferences, because during their writing time, I'm not pulling a lot of small groups. Instead, I'm pulling a lot of um, individual conferences during writing. I like doing individual conferences during writing because during that time, I can say, hey, go bring me your data binder and go bring me your writing folder. And then I wanna see what it is. And then we can kind of go through all of their information all together at once. Um, during reading, I kind of see me doing a lot more small group, small groups versus doing individual conferences. But I am going to try to keep it to where maybe I have about another 10 minutes or so at the end of each one to be able to sit down with students and say, okay, this is what we're, we need to look at in your reading. Um, but that's going to have to vary on a day to day basis. So I'm not really sure how much I'm going to incorporate reading conferences within my block just because my time limit is so small. So during this entire time, I know you're probably thinking, how in the world are you gonna manage everything? Um, it is going to be quite a challenge, but here's kind of something that I've come up with with some other teachers. Just because mass customized learning is such a big thing to try to wrap our heads around and being making sure that we're individualizing everything and we're not just kind of giving them whole group lessons because everybody's needs are different. Um, so this is kind of what we ended up coming with. So kind of like we create lesson plans for ourselves, I'm creating lesson plans based on every student's needs and then I'm giving it to them. So every week they're going to receive kind of a rundown of what it is that they're going to specifically need. What it'll have is it's going to have its overall arching kind of I can statement that they're looking at. And then every day of the week, I'm going to really break that down and say, OK, this is what we're going to focus on on Monday. This is what we're going to do on Tuesday. So maybe let's say that I have some of those students who need a little extra support in reading. I have some RAS Kids accounts that I can use for them. So then it may be that during one of those days that week, I may say, hey, I want you to go on to RAS Kids and I want you to complete this. We also have, you know, just with having iPads too, we also have lots of different accounts on some really great websites that you're like, I really want to use this, but I don't know when I'm going to actually do it. Well, again, it may be that on that day for that specific thing, I may have them go on to um, Study Island and say, hey, in Study Island today, I want you to focus in on this character that I've set up for you, this character traits or summarizing fiction that I've set up for you so that they can go and complete some of those tasks that well as well. And it'll also hold them accountable too. Um, my partner teacher does something very similar with that. She does something called a choice board. So she has her board up there and learners have to kind of go through and scratch things off as they've completed them. So that's the same idea that I'm going to be using in my reading and my writing. I'm holding my students accountable and then I'm checking them off at the end of the week to see and make sure that they've completed all of the tasks that they've needed to complete. But mainly for me, I wanted to make sure that I'm meeting with, with them individually during my writing time to discuss data binders, to discuss their writing. And then I'm also having a lot of different small groups so that I can vary it up based upon what they actually need. And I'm not wasting time. And I know you're probably thinking too, like all of these reading response journals are probably going to drive her crazy. Um, I'm not really sure if they are yet. I will definitely let you know, but this is the idea. And I really want to make sure that I'm holding myself accountable. It's going to keep me on my toes. And I want to make sure that, you know, if I'm telling them to do something, I want them to know that I really value, but value it. And I care about what it is that they're doing. And I'm not just making them do it just to do it because that's not the end goal for us. We want to make sure that we're giving them something that's valuable and important. And they're actually going to be able to see that, oh, she really does care about what I actually have to say because in honesty I really do care about what they do have to say and two I'm not giving them a small group response every single week I'm only doing it probably once a week 
Um, and that's after we've kind of gone through it and I've modeled it. We've done it together as a group. They've done it together as partners. And then I wanted to check their final understanding of what it is that they have of that skill. Did they grasp that skill? Did they do it? Yes or no? If not, then I'm going to have to re recheck them the next week and we're going to have to look at what it is that we didn't understand all the way. So that will hold us accountable as well. Um, I feel like they're really important and it's something that students can really benefit from as well. And it shows their progress as, as readers and as writers. So at the very end of my reading block, for the last 10 minutes, I kind of wrap up my students and I will ring a bell and all of them will go back to a little area where they know for a fact that I'm going to be doing a read aloud. And this is the opportunity of me just being able to sit down with my class and be able to read a book. If you are a part of the Global Read Aloud, um, that is something that I am doing this year with my students too, so that is pretty exciting. Definitely go and check it out if you have not already. Um, this is where you get to connect with other classrooms from all over the world and you are reading the same book. So it's something that I'm very, very excited about. We also have something called One School, One Book, where everyone in the school votes on a book and then we have a well, the teachers do. So the teachers vote on a book that they would like to read and then we read it all to our class for the year. So I have 10 minutes set aside for me to be able to do some type of a read aloud and really make connections with my, with my students and kind of let them learn off of each other too because I feel like that's a really big component of reading is being able to hear other people's ideas and understand how they're thinking and where did they get this from because they learn so much from each other that working in groups and doing that kind of thing, they, it really helps them kind of process everything. And when, you know, sometimes as a teacher, I can't explain something the way that every kid needs, but another kid could totally make connections with another student and they all of a sudden get it. So um, having that opportunity to be able to sit down and enjoy a book and show that love of reading with my class is something that's very important. So I use that last 10 minutes to kind of wrap up my reading time, have my read aloud, and then that's where we'll transition into the next part of our day. I would love to know what it is that you are interested in learning a little bit more about how I teach things or some mini lessons that I am doing. So if you do, if you have some things that you would like for me to do in the near future, please make sure to leave that comment down below so that I can put it down in my books. And I promise I do read all of your comments. I may not have time right now to be able to answer them all, but I do definitely read all of them. They're very, very sweet. Thank you all so much. Um, leave a comment down below letting me know what it is that you would like to know more about in my reading workshop, in my writing workshop, and I will definitely put that down. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it out to any of the teachers that you think would really enjoy watching this video. And I will talk to you guys really, really soon. Bye!